Yay! Yay! Hey, let's try an elastic collision in two dimensions uh, instead of just the one that we had done last time. So here I've got a uh, large mass uh, headed in with a speed of VI. Uh, we'll call that the X direction. And it hits a small mass and then the two go off in different directions. Um, so what I want to know is, suppose I know what VI is. Um, can I, oh, and suppose I know uh, theta. I mean, you have to know something after the collision. So if I just know the direction of the little mass, can I figure out everything else, the speed of the little mass and then the speed and direction of the big mass? Um, yes, yes, we can. Uh, all right, so let's write it down. Conservation of momentum. Uh, initially, that's going to mean that MVI, it's just in the X, right? So it's just going to be MVI and zero. There's my initial momentum vector. This has to be the final momentum. So this is going to be, um, uh, let's do MVM cosine theta, uh, MVM sine theta. Uh, and then I need to add in uh, the other momentum of the big mass. And so this is going to be uh, big M, V, M. You know what? Uh, it turns out to be a little bit easier algebraically just to leave it as X and V, M, Y. And not to worry about the angle. We'll be able, uh, once we solve for those components, we can get the angle, right, with the inverse tangent. So let's just leave it as components um, for right now. I think that'll be easier. Okay, so uh, what's one other equation that we're going to use? These are elastic collisions, right? So not only is momentum conserved in each direction, uh, but kinetic energy is conserved. So let's write down kinetic energy. Um, so that's going to be uh, 1 half big M VI squared. Uh, and that's going to be 1 half little m VM squared plus 1 half big M. Big M squared. Okay, neat. Um, but you know what? Since we left it, oops, I didn't close the bracket. Uh, since we left it in terms of components, look how I can write the second equation. Um, let me write it like this. This will be kind of useful. One half MVI squared uh, is one half MVM squared. What is Vm squared? That's the speed of the mass, right? But if I know the components, the x and y components, that's just mvmx squared plus one half vmy squared, right? Um, that's certainly going to be true. This thing breaks into two pieces. Okay, so now that we know that, um, let's go ahead and see what we can solve for. Uh, let's go back up to the momentum equation. Let's look at the, let's look at the y equation of the conservation of momentum. Uh, this tells us one of the things that we want to know. This tells us that V M Y, if I solve for that, uh, that's just going to be minus little m over big M, um, times V little m sine theta. Uh, we're going to need that later. So let's go ahead and box that up. Uh, let's see, that's one thing we know. And another thing we know, I can solve for the x component in the top equation. So now let's look at this one. Uh, and if I solve for the x component, v m x, uh, let's see what I get. Uh, I get v i because the big M's cancel, then I get little m over big M, the M cosine theta. Okay, um, so right now that doesn't necessarily tell us what those things are exactly, but I draw a careful box. Um, but if, I, I mean, I already know what VI is, right? Um, and I know the masses. So all I need to know, I need to figure out VM, and then I've got it, then I've got all three. So how we're going to get v little m, uh, the speed of little m, is to use the energy equation. Um, so let's do that. Um, okay, first of all, look at the energy equation. All of these halves, I didn't even need to write them, right? Those, those would have canceled out. 
Okay, let's take a look at the energy equation and let's go ahead and just solve it for vi squared. vi squared, uh, if I divide everyone by big M, that's just going to be little m over big M. Um, m squared. Um, and now I'm going to substitute in what I got for the x and y components for big M. So this is going to be, uh, let's see, the big M's are going to go away, right? So this is just going to be um, plus vmx squared. Okay, so this is going to be vi squared minus little m over big M vm cos and theta. Oh, but that thing's going to be squared, isn't it? So, so we'll have a little bit of work ahead. Uh, and then vmy, the big M's cancel out, and I got vmy squared, and so that's going to be plus uh, little m squared over big M squared uh, vm squared sine squared. Okay, running out of room. Um, all right, so uh, let's see uh, what we get. Oops. Um, oh, I don't know. Why did I square this? That's not, that's not squared yet. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and just multiply this out. Let's see what we get. VI squared uh, is just going to be M over big M, VM squared. I'm going to have plus VI squared minus 2. Uh, plus little m over big M. Each of those are squared. Vm squared. Cosine squared. Uh, plus, oh, look. Those two terms are going to combine together. And we're going to get cosine squared plus sine squared. Um, Cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. Again, running out of room. Okay. Um, so that goes to one, which is nice. Um, look at this. I got this term and that term. And so those go away. And so it looks like, uh, can I solve for Vm? Let's see. If I take a Vm away from everyone, that makes that just regular Vm. Cross that one out. Makes that just regular VM. Um, and so now if I take all the VM terms to one side, um, it looks like I have a VM. Oh, and look, I got a little m over a big M in every term too, don't I? Boom, boom. And then this crosses out one of those powers. Oh, that makes it a lot nicer. Okay, let's write down what I got because this is going to look confusing. Zero is just equal to VM minus two, hopefully I don't forget something, V i uh, cos and theta plus little m over big M uh, V m. There, I think that's all I have left. So now I can just solve for V m, take uh, the other term to the other side. So V m is just gonna be two V i cos and theta, uh, and then I have my one plus a ratio of the masses, right? One plus little m over big M. Looks like that is it. Because that's in terms of everything I know. Um, I, I know the theta um, and I know the masses and I know VI. So sure enough, I can get VM. And so now you see the strategy is that now I can take that VM, I can plug it back in and find out what the components of the big masses velocity um, is and then we're done now we've solved now we solved the whole thing so only knowing the masses and the initial velocity and then measuring the angle of the smaller thing this would have worked out okay if we only knew that the, the angle of the bigger thing we can solve for everything else uh that's sort of the neat magic of elastic collisions is that we don't have to know very much this assumption that uh, kinetic energy is conserved takes us a long way it sort of eliminates something that we have to know um so for example if you want to check this for yourself uh, let's put some numbers in. Let's say, uh, what did I do? I said big M. Suppose this is six kilograms. Little M is 
two kilograms just to see how the numbers work out suppose theta is 30 degrees uh, and the initial speed is 12 meters per second when you plug those numbers in what you get is vm is if you want to check 15.6 so sure enough it's going faster sort of like you might anticipate uh v big m x uh what did i get 7.5 v big m y is minus 2.5 so sure enough the, the it goes down in the y direction so v if you know those two things you can also verify then um that v m is uh what did i get 7.94 and that little angle phi is uh, minus 19.1 degrees there. Um, so if you want to verify that, uh, that's fine. What you should also do is you should verify um, that momentum is concerned. So check, if you go back and check, check that PI equals PF in the X and PIY is PFY. Check the momentum in the X and the Y directions. And what you're going to find out is that those things are conserved, sure enough. Um, all you do is you just plug those numbers back into uh, these equations and the equations we had here at the beginning for momentum. And you find out the momentum is, is conserved. And then sure enough, go back and then check this one too. Check the kinetic energy equation because we have all those numbers now. And what you're going to find out is that those check out and the kinetic initial equals the kinetic final it's always a good idea to take a minute and go back and check everything to make sure you didn't blow a sign um, or have some arithmetic error so sure enough the kinetic energy is conserved here too um, so it all uh, it all sort of works out that's neat there's one other kind of cool result um, that i wanted to show i think i have enough room on this page to do it um, what if There's a generally cool result if little m equals big m. If these are identical objects that collide together, um, what happens? There's a relationship between the angles, between the of, of the angle between these things. Um, how we get it is uh, we can just take the dot product. Remember, the dot product um, is proportional to the angle between two vectors. So let's take the dot product of the um, velocity vectors. So in other words, just dividing out the mass, the final velocity vectors. Okay, so here's what that would look like. Uh, so just for kicks, let's look at um, uh, Vm cosine theta, Vm cosine theta. Uh, you know what? I better do this Let's do this uh, on a fresh, uh, mm, uh, uh, fresh sheet of paper, as it were. Okay, so if, oops, uh, there's something cool we can do. Okay, so the momentum uh, I'm going to have uh, the final momentum of these two things is going to be v m. Cosine theta v m sine theta. Sure enough, um, and I'm going to take the dot product with v big m cosine theta and v big m sine theta. Well, we already kind of figured that out, didn't we? So let me go ahead and write it as vmx and vmy since we already kind of figured out what those were okay um vm cosine theta uh let's go back and check um we said that that was going to be um look at look at our equation for vm right here um m over m that's going to be one right because the masses are equal so that's a two in the denominator and a two in the numerator so vm is just vi cos and theta right so let's go back and write that vm 
is just vi cos and theta right so this is just going to be uh, v i cos squared theta um and then on the bottom i just have v i uh cos theta sine theta there we go and down here let's go back and write what we had for vmx and vmy uh we had for vmx i have vi minus uh, little m over big m is going to be one so looking down here at this equation it's going to be one and then i have my vm cos and theta okay so i'm going to have vi minus vm cos and theta so i'm going to have my vi minus vm cos and theta so it's going to be vi cos and squared theta and then for the y component i'm looking at this so it's going to be a minus vm sine theta all right so it's going to be a minus vm sine theta okay well that's going to be a vi cosine theta uh cosine uh, squared theta It'll just cosine theta oh and then sine theta Okay, so now we've written all those down. Let's take the dot product because we're going to find out something cool. Uh, this is going to be, uh, let's see, the x components is going to be vi squared. Uh, let me do it on another line. vi squared cosine squared theta minus vi squared cosine to the fourth theta. And now for the dot product, uh, I add the y components, right? So I'm going to do a minus, because I got a minus sign down there. Uh, this is going to be vi squared cosine squared theta sine squared theta. Okay. Um, so this is going to be vi squared cosine squared theta minus vi cosine squared theta those last two terms let me take out a vi squared cosine squared theta from each one i'm going to factor that out right oh this is going to be squared uh and then i'm just going to have um a vi oops i've already taken out the vi so this is just going to be cosine squared theta minus uh, oops i took out the minus sign plus sine squared theta look at that so that's just going to be one and then look at the terms on the outside vi squared cosine squared but it's zero that's a cool result so what i have is that the dot product of the velocities of these two things afterwards if they both have the same mass so uh in a collision between uh, identical masses the final velocities are perpendicular that's neat so they'll always bounce off of each other uh, at an angle of 90 degrees that's awfully useful um and so that's a it's a neat little factoid to stick in the back of your head uh, and that'll make subsequent problems a lot easier as you go along